we are so wired up for our environment that it stimulates a large part of our brains. I always use the hands as a really good example of this. They're wired up with something like 10,000 nerve endings on each fingertip. So when you're using your hands, you're using the most massive amount of your brain. That's got to be a good thing because if you think about when we're feeling low, when we're feeling depressed, we're using a small amount of our brain. The more brain we use, the better we feel. I like to think of the brain as a kind of library of information and facts, but it's in our body that we know how we react to those facts. Actually getting out of our heads and into our bodies is a really healthy thing to do and guides us in lots of ways. Rhythmic movement is self-soothing and it appears to stimulate our self-regulating, our ability to self-heal. Having something at the end in terms of making something beautiful, I think, is, is really inspiring. There's motivation there. You start with a little bit of earth and you end up with a very beautiful object. I can never imagine not working with clay, ever. It's not, it's not a job, it's a, it's, it's a way of life. It's such a unique material. It responds to your sense of touch and you have a conversation with it. So you can push it in different directions, you can squeeze it gently. It just makes you feel really good using it. It's very satisfying. It's very therapeutic. You get into a rhythm of making. All you think about when you're on the wheel in particular is just what your hands are doing. I would really love to devote more time into exploring the science behind touch because it's one of the first senses that we develop when we're inside the womb. The project that I'm working on is to be held, to hold, to hold, to be held. I have these bowls. Their size is deliberately intimate. It really came about with the pandemic and just you know, thinking about touch and our associations with touch and as a maker, everything you do is about touch. From you touching the clay to you then creating the objects for people then to touch. Fifteen Days in Clay is an organisation I set up 17 years ago and the idea behind it was to enable adults with additional needs the opportunity to become practicing ceramic artists. I'm not an art therapist, you know, I, I really set 15 days up just really to, to enable people to work with clay. What I didn't realize was the huge benefits clay would bring. I mean, it is, it's extraordinary. You sit there and the pride from somebody making a piece of work is just enormous. When you give somebody responsibility and allow them to be who they are, I think just amazing things happen and it's life-changing. It is incredibly inspirational to have mentors to look up to. So Bernard Leach coming here in 1920 seems absolutely extraordinary. It seems extraordinary that Hamad Oshoji came here and that they both set up this pottery together. And what a wonderful collaboration that was between two men, but also between the UK and Japan. Doing something so powerful and communicating it so well, writing his book, sharing his knowledge, that remains the number one inspiration for me here in St Ives. Bernard learned pottery in Japan and they had a tradition going back hundreds of years of small potteries producing specific types of work in an aesthetic that really appealed to Bernard. It was quite um, the opposite of our sort of factory-made precise ceramics that was being produced, you know, as a consequence of the Industrial Revolution. We kind of led the Industrial Revolution 
and it destroyed our relationship with so much that we get inspiration and healing from. I think one of the fabulous messages of Bernard Leach is let, let's go back to being human again. The, the core of our, what we do is, is producing a standard way and, and, and that's the basis on which we train people. Everybody that comes to work at the Leach Studio sort of learns all the processes. So the idea is that when they leave to set up their own pottery, they know how to, they know everything from beginning to end. They can see a pot through all the different stages. It takes many, many years to sort of perfect any craft. When you're working in a, in a team structure like we do, it's a lot quicker because you kind of, you know, you see the results very quickly and there's always instant feedback. We produce between 15 and 20,000 pieces a year. It's immensely satisfying for people to see that va their value and their contribution. Generally, people that do the kind of work that we do are happier. We have a, a very good educational program and some people just do evening classes and I, and I think they would say it's very therapeutic where maybe in my case it's not necessarily because it's just work but it's satisfying work. I love the challenge of it and the, being able to see something through through beginning to end and seeing the results. It's great that it's still here and it's great that it's reaching out and can provide a space for craft and for healing and uh, for reminding people, which I think is what Bernard Leach wanted to do, of, of the importance of craft. I've been working on my own without other people in, in a shared studio and it allows me to have closer connection with my work. Disadvantages are that you, you miss the communication and you miss the buzz of other people in a studio and their energy that they can give off and their passion and enthusiasm. All the teachers that have taught me owe it to them to pass that on. You know, the thing that inspired that me about them or what they told me, you know, if I can somehow pass that on, that keeps that spirit of human creativity alive. A little bit of me carries on, you know, like just like the people who have taught me things and are now gone, there's still a bit of them alive. That's how I see positive practice. I, I get to pass, pass the knowledge on to others. Positive practice to me is there is no wrong. There is, there's always a way. So it's about everything is possible. I'm very much the kind of person that if someone says no, I'll find a way to infuse somebody to to in, you know engage and be creative is is an absolute gift is and it feeds off every, everybody feeds off it creativity is just an extraordinary way of making us feel feel good it's a way for a lot of people to communicate their emotions their feelings it's an outlet I think positive labels things in terms of an expectation. And I think maybe another way to look at it is simply practice. With the COVID situation, obviously it was totally unexpected. We were just getting ready for celebrating the, the 100th anniversary of the founding of the Leech Pottery. The great thing about the Leech Pottery, it has a legacy, it's you know, survived for a hundred years of this country's history and all the turbulent sort of times, it's still kind of held on. And I think being creative, I think, gives a sort of independent thinking. It was decided the focus should be to, to reopen the shop online. I didn't think like, you know, why would people be spending money on pots during a pandemic, which you don't, you know, so it's such an insecure situation for a lot of people. We were selling work as fast as we could make it from our shop online as well as from our retailers that we supply they just kept coming back to us with orders we think it's because people are at home and they, they, they can't go out to eat they can't go on holiday a lot of people have started cooking at home as well i think we're going to be okay on the other side of this it's been a really nice time sort of over lockdown to create work that really is is actually about me which i've never done before 
And so it's it's using it as a vehicle to kind of get, get my kind of feelings and emotions out. But I'm actually just really enjoying playing. Something about having earth in your hands, I think for me, I find just, yeah, really magical and really kind of calming. At the beginning, I tried to do everything. So I was trying to fit in the pottery and to meet deadlines and to continue my practice and to be mum and homeschooling and that juggle just became too much. The priority was towards my family. Once I'd made that decision, it, it was a, a lot easier for me. Instead, I drew, I researched, we went for walks, it was time for reflection, I did a lot of reading. You just do the best you can under the circumstances, but also feeling so lucky to be able to have a, a creative life. It's going to take a long time to heal, I think, um, as we as we emerge from this. And, and I feel deeply impacted by it and will for a long time, but I also feel we have the tools to heal. I'm amazed that we don't ask what is the environment that we thrive in. And we need to start asking that question and we need to start coming up with answers. There's always, I believe there's always a solution to everything. And I think, keep it positive. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Let's not worry about it. You know, if something blows up, you know, it's not a problem. Luckily, very rarely does that ever happen. <laughs> I like to think of us as a, as a little ship at sea, you know, and, and we'll be okay if, if, the, if the crew sticks together. And we are a little bit lucky as well, I guess. I would really encourage people to work with their hands however they can. Be wonderfully unambitious. Um, and just enjoy making and, and, and watch what happens. <laughs>